Well, let's talk about that a little bit. So, how did you meet your sister, Nun on the Run? Okay, what happened was uh, the people from um, Dade County, Florida, the grandparents were Cuban grandparents. Uh -huh. And their granddaughter was being molested by the step uh, her stepfather, in other words, somebody that married their daughter. And she, they, she would come to the house and, and complain. And so they had her examined, and the doctor said, yeah, there's evidence of some physical abuse here. So they said, okay, well, you know, arrest the guy. They said, well, we don't have enough evidence. Besides that, he's, he's going into counseling. And the granddaughter would come to visit the grandparents in Dade County, and she'd hide. She would be afraid to go back because she didn't want to get molested. She was at the point where she was, like, urinating under the bed and just hiding. And, and the grandparents said, you know what? We're not going to send her back. Was she so living they, in California No, and they were all in Florida. Oh, they're Dade, all in Florida. They're all okay. in Dade County, okay. Florida. And the grandparents, would, she would come to visit the grandparents and say, he hurt me. He did this. He did that. Finally, the grandparents put her in a truck with them and left. They left everything. They left their house. They left their furniture. Then they had a pair of rosary beads. Where did they go? They came to California and looked for a religious location. And they found these Dominicans uh, with the picture that none, this, the, she right there, she's the, she was the head of them at the time. Her name was Sister. Okay, so they go there and they tell the story to these nuns. Meanwhile, the FBI is looking for, for child abduction. Okay. There's warrants, felony warrants out. And kidnapping and child abduction and the whole thing. So How did they, they were at putting felony warrants out for kidnapping of their own child? No, it was the grandparents. Oh, but didn't they have legal custody? No. no? They had parents involved, but they just yeah, were not the in the mother, picture. Yeah, the mother and a stepfather had legal custody. Okay. The mother of the girl was married to a, a, a guy who was, who, was a step, who was a stepfather of the girl. So the mother and the stepfather had custody of the girl. Where were they when all this was going on? They were right there. The mother thought that the girl uh, would, would not be molested again. Her own daughter said, my daughter is okay. This guy did it once. He's not going to do it again. You know, it was, it was a situation where it was intolerable. The grandparents said, we're not going to bring, bring, let them do that. So the grandparents put her in a car. They took control. Took, took, yeah, and left mm -hmm. and committed all. And then when they got out here, of course, the nuns helped hide them, which is, you know, when you go to a you know, false ID, this kind of thing, that's, those are felonies. And that for 13 years, till the girl was 18, they hid this girl. Meanwhile, the FBI's got her on age enhanced on the fo on the internet. They're looking all over for her. When she finally becomes 18, she says, "Okay, I'm ready to tell people what happened, and I no, don't have to go back there. She's an adult now. She doesn't sure. have to worry about going back." So when they came out, they went to this lawyer uh, in Orange County first, and uh, that lawyer said, "Well, you know, there's felony warrants out here." So I can't be harboring a fugitive. We're going to have to have you arrested, taken into custody, and then brought back to Florida. So the you know when you, that happens, you you arrest them. The nuns do a perp walk. You know they take off their veils and put on prison clothes. And the guy, the, the news guy, was all over this. That would have been a great story. There's enough problem with priests. Can you imagine? Yeah, now the nuns marching them out of their convent with all their veils off and in prison clothes and in handcuffs. Okay. That's what they had planned. The LA Times had a big story ready to go. Oh wow! So this priest sent it to me. So then what uh, happened? And I, well, then I then I got I called Washington, and I also stopped the indictment coming down till I proved. It took a long time to get all the records from 13 years ago. I proved that everything that they said was true, and that the girl was being molested. And the only reason that nuns did this is to protect her from further harm because the child services in Dade County, Florida, did, would, did, was not protecting people. So bo bottom line, all the charges just dropped. She's happy. Everybody is done. And now... Uh, Whatever happened to the perpetrator? Anything? Nothing. That was eight, 13 years ago. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever went after him. There was no prosecution? No, no. nothing. So, so that story, you know, but for 13 years, a lot of things happened. They, somebody had tipped them off one time, and they had come to the... The FBI was looking for all the different little things that happened while she was growing up. She had a different name. Sometimes she wanted her name back. And uh, it was interesting how these nuns would go to a library and figure out how to avoid this. And well, that was my next question is, how did the nuns, without having any training 
I'm presuming. Go to the or, library. Or, so they went to the library to figure out ways to keep yeah. her incognito and to keep her out of the radar yeah. of the internet. And, 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 and let these people work. They were working as gardeners and maids. They had false ID. Like I said, there was a lot of different felonies committed. Sure. And they were going to bust them all, and then I got involved. So that and what what was the strategy when you got involved that helped? I stopped them, and then I then I had to f verify that she was actually molested by getting physical records from 13 years ago. Then I had to show that it was in defense of the of the child that all these things happened, and then I got a guy and finally a prosecutor from Washington called the AU, AUSA and said, "Hold off till we ver give Capazola time to prove this." See, I used to be a prosecutor. I worked for the district attorney. I was also assigned to the organized crime strike force. So you could see both so sides. Had, yeah, and I also had contacts on both sides. Like, even today, you know, a few years ago, I'm representing the nephew of Carlo, if you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's- Do they paint houses? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that, I'm on, I have people on that side that mm -hmm. trust me. Mm -hmm. And then I've got people on the other side. Like, I've represented a lot of people on the other side. Well, when you talk about so like... I've got, so what I'm saying is I'm right in the middle. So sometimes when one side wants to talk to the other side, I'll get a phone call. I'm Steve Cooley, you know, the DA, he's a good guy, my friend. And I, because you're in a strategic position that can yeah, get results. And I'm right in the middle. And when you talk about like the case with the nun, where you were, obviously there was allegations by a child that were correct yeah. and that you proved. Yeah. Like the Michael Jackson case, we have allegations by a child that obviously were the opposite. What kind of differences or strategies do you think that you've employed? You know, there's a couple cases, and I've got 14 of them written up, by mm -hmm. the way, because people have been looking at these things. For instance, the Michael Jackson case is mm -hmm. an absolute travesty of justice as to what happens. If you're a layman, you don't know it until you get it explained. But in Michael Jackson's case, for instance, I'm going to say something that you probably never thought of because it's not, there was no preliminary. And the grandmother said, I have faith in a, in a couple things. And Dr. Phil said, oh, I'm interested in that, that you would do that. What were they? And she said, I have faith in my rosary beads and at 357 Magnum. And so when he said that, everybody cracked up.